Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, host of Last Three Brain Cells and host of Between Terminas on Oriented Batels. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud or those watching on Oriented Batels. A lot to look at this week here. Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about um we got some we got a basketball hire. We got to talk about a sea home with Spencer Adams taking over. We're gonna talk that. Um, but we're gonna talk about first our main story here. Um, and that's a tribute to a Clarkson icon. Um, of course, a lot of you've heard around the week that um former Clarkson basketball coach and legendary athletic director Dan Fife passed away um on Thursday at the age of seventy four. Um. And you look at what he's done for the Clark community. He's done everything he asked. I mean, I mean, like he's been an athletic director. He's been a coach. Um, he's been a very, he's been a very good base. He was a very good baseball player. Um, drafted in the second round um, um, in the 1971 draft of the Detroit Tigers. Um, played his college ball at Michigan. Um, you know, played high school ball at Clarkston. Um, Coached from 1982 until 2018. Um, led Clarkston. He had 703 wins, which is third all-time in state history. Um, 29 league titles, 30 district championships, um, two state championships in um, 2017 and 2018, and 13 regional crowns. Um, he was elected to the Michigan sports, um, um, I mean, like, and a basketball Michigan coach to Hall of Fame. Um, he's been he was elected to both of them. He was seven hundred three and one seventy in his thirty six years coaching at Clarkston. Um, and you know, and I know, and Clarkson Twitter Clarkson's Twitter page sent him a comment. Um, you know, a statement about Coach Fife. I mean, so I like to read it on air here. Um, he said, um, they said so sad by the passing of Coach Ann Fife today. But honored to celebrate his life and legacy. Coach, the lives that you impacted on and off the court are truly remarkable. Your commitment to Clarkson Athletics, in particular Clarkson Basketball, is second to none. It's amazing how much you got out of your players consistently year after year. After coaching 36 seasons, you were made 703 wins, won 29 league titles, 30 district trophies, 13 regional crowns, and two state championships. Your election to the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame and the Michigan Basketball Coaches Hall of Fame speaks volumes of you as a coach. You are still, you are and still are the best basketball coach in the state of Michigan. From coaching your own kids to remembering every kid's name in our McGraw Basketball Leagues, for years coaching your former players' kids, your impact we felt for generations. More importantly, your love for Dan, Dugan, Jeremy, and Dane are something to be admired. Family is always number one for you, and you poured your heart and soul into them. We will always continue to play hard, to play sm- to play hard, to play s- to play smart, and play together. We love you and miss you, Coach Fife. That's what it tells you. I was lucky enough to know Coach Fife. First year I met him was in 02. I've known him for nearly almost 20 years. He was humble, honest, and straight to the point. I posted a link on my blog. Um, um, he was on my um, sports talk show between Terminas, um, episode 104. I recommend everybody in OA Nation to watch um that episode. Um because he was here in our in the studio. He we talked sports. And he was here. Of course I had Anthony Ian and also um Lake Orient Athletic Director Bill Reese was also on that um on the show as well. So you want to take a look at that? I have a link to it on my blog at second of at blogspot.com. Um, anytime I took on Coach Fife, you know what I mean? You kind of felt his aura. 
he kind of felt his magic, not just in the basketball court, but everywhere on the football field, the baseball diamond. Um, his influence and magic always surrounded Clarkson. It always has. Dan Fife was one of the most greatest men I've ever met. And he loved Clarkson. He, you can see him, you see him sweeping the floors on the basketball court. He knows the players' names. He knows even, he knows, he even knows, you know, he even knows the players' names. I mean, you know, everyone he, he touched for 36 years. You know what I mean? You look at the assistant coaches he's had. You look at the, I mean, you look at all, you look at the fight disciples. I mean, you look at, you know, Tim Wasilik, the current boys basketball coach. Um, also former girls basketball coach at Clarkson. Coaching the boys program right now. Um, Matt Nicholson. You look at, he's the JV coach over there. Um, you look at Andrew Myers. Coach Pontiac. He played for Coach Fife. Coach Cunningham. Freshman coach at Clarkson. Played for Fife. Coach Fife has 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 really you know touched everybody in the basketball community. He's touched everybody. I wish I wish those, you know what I mean, you know, people outside of Clarkston, you know what I mean, would respect and honor the generate the legacy that Coach Dan Fife did. He loved Clarkston. He loved them. You know, and, and the results prove it. He was the athletic director, you know, for Clarkston. He was the athletic director when they won their when they won their um, two state championships in football in 2013-2014. You know? I mean I mean like he's done everything you asked with Clarkson. He's done everything. I mean, you look at what he's done in the basketball court. You mean like, you know, 36 years coaching. The results prove it. The results prove it. I mean, Coach Tim Wasilik, he he wrote he wrote this on the um, Clarkson Twitter page. Miss you, Coach. I was fortunate to be able to grow up on the street, grow up the street from Coach Fife. I played sports at his house with his kids every week. He coached me at at our McGraw basketball league, Gus Macker tournaments and youth basketball for years while growing up. I golfed at his Spring Lake golf course countless times. I played varsity basketball for him and was fortunate to be his assistant coach and continue to learn from the greatest. He taught me how to compete at the highest level, work harder than your opponent, and win and lose the right way. More importantly, he modeled how to be a great husband, father, and a friend. He loved Clarkson Athletics more than anyone I ever knew. Coach was like a second father to me. And he was still, and he's still the little voice in my head helping me make the right decisions in life. I wouldn't be coaching today if it wasn't for Coach Fife. Love you, Coach. That says, that says it. That says it. You know? I remember meeting him in 02. You know what I mean? I was a, you know, I was a very young lad. Um, but it was very gracious to see him, very gracious to meet him. Um, even though I didn't like him beating me, beating me almost, beating me every time. Um, but he always had class. He had respect. And, you know, going up and he know and he knows you by name. So when we got to know each other through the years, I grown and appreciated and respected Coach Dan Fife. He was one of the 
main reasons why I thought about doing this podcast. You know, I mean, just to cover high school sports, to cover his teams, you know what I mean? To basically get into journalism. I mean, I look at Dan Fife, you know, and, and, I, and I would say to him, you're one of the main guys that got me into this. And I appreciate him for that. I really appreciate Coach Dan Fife for everything he's done in my career. He's been on BT, as I mentioned earlier. I post the link on the um on the blog at second before this put the at blogspot.com. I mean, we talked we talked so many other things besides basketball. We talked life stories. I mean, we talk so much life stories. I mean, I can tell you so many stories about Coach Dane, about Coach Fife. So many positives, you know. And you know, I would always appreciate everything Coach Dane Fife has done. I still remember the um. 2011 volleyball state semifinals in Battle Creek. I remember sitting there next to um, Lake Orion Athletic Director Bill Reese, and we did a little call, and we saw Co- we saw Coach Fife on the other side of the Kellogg Center in Battle Creek, and he decided we decided to um we decided to like call, you know what I mean? We decided to call, so. And he picked up and he said, I can't believe that you, I can't believe you two are calling me. I can't believe you're calling me. And we got a big laugh out of it. We got a big laugh out of it. That's how much he cared for everybody. You can have a great conversation. You can go out and have great conversations with Coach Fife. And I'll tell you what, they are the most classiest conversations that I've ever been a part of. I still remember my last conversation with Coach Fife in 2020 um, when, before COVID hit, um, you know, seeing how I was doing. And I was hanging in there, you know, doing good, you know. You know, just the love and the respect that Coach Fife give, gave me. I will always cherish that for the rest of my life. Coach Fife was not just a great coach, but a great friend, great person to learn. To learn. I remember him and, and Bill Reese. They were close. They were very close. You know, both of them very close. I owe I owe a lot of my career to both those two gentlemen. They made me they made me who I was. They're the reasons why I'm doing a pod. I mean, they're the re- they're the reasons why to carry on and get and get stronger. I've been thinking about this. Since, ever since coming back from the Oakland County Middle School meet, which was at Clarkston. And it's been really difficult, I'll be honest with you. Because Coach Fife did so many things good. So many things good. His legacy will never be tarnished. Always been an honest man, a good man. And, you know, the records and boy, the records speak for themselves. He's got a field house named after him at Clarkston. He's got a field house named after him. The Dan Five Field House. I can't tell you how much love I have for Coach Fife. You know, and then hearing the news, it broke my heart 
and I know it broke my brother's heart. I wrote a column tributing a Clarkson icon because Dan Fife is a Clarkson icon. I would call him Mr. Clarkson. You see his aura at every Clarkson game, whether it's football or basketball. I mean, whether girls or boys basketball or baseball. I mean, I mean, softball. I mean, like, you look at track and field. I'll tell you, his aura still surrounds us. His aura still surrounds us. Yes, he may be an eternal life, but his, but his legacy, his spirit, still lives within the, within the school of Clarkston, within the players that he coached, the friendships he's had. I wish this generation would understand and respect the legacy that Coach Fife brought. I mean, he was a three-sport athlete. He played football. He played basketball. He played baseball. He was a multi-sport athlete. He was a multi-sport athlete. He played at Michigan. But he came back to Clarkston. He came back to Clarkston. Took over the boys' basketball program. And 36 years later, it says a lot. That says a lot, what he's done. He went out on top, winning two Division I state championships. He's had a lot of star players. Dane Fife knew how to win. He knew how. And how to do it the right way. He knows how to win with class and lose with class. Lose with class. That tells you how much Coach Fife is to Clarkson. The numbers prove it. The legacy he left proves it. The aura still surrounds us today. It still it surrounds us all. Anytime you go to Fleming's Lake Road, anytime you play Clarkson, you always think about the first person that comes to the mind when going up against Clarkson is Dan Fife. You know, you always look at it because of the the positive impact that he brought to the community of Clarkston. The kids he coached, you know, you remember the McGraw camps. You remember playing him in the regular season or in the playoffs, you know. Just the legacy that Coach Dan Fife brought never going to be forgotten and it shouldn't be forgotten because he left a positive impact at Clarkson whether he's been coaching being the athletic director or playing I hope future generations read the story and the legacy that Coach Dan Fife brought to Clarkston. To me, Coach Dan Fife will and forever be Mr. Clarkston. And I think that's a good um and I think that's a good um good statement to leave at. Thoughts and prayers to his family. Um, the community of Clarkston, 
my heart goes with you at this time. And, uh, and this for me to say to Coach Fife, to Coach Fife, thank you. We'll see each other again someday. God bless you and God bless all. All right. So now I got to talk more boys basketball news. Um, Seaholm actually named the new boys basketball coach. Um, Spencer Adams takes over the reins um, for Coach Mike DeGeter. Um, obviously, you look at what um, what Seaholm, um, you know, what they're going to go through. Um, Spencer Adams takes over that program. Um, the Geeter went 83 and 126 in his 10 years at Seaholm, um, coaching that program. Um, of course, when you look at Adams, you got to think of, of course, you know, football. Um, he's the defensive coordinator to coach Jim Dewald. Um, so this is a very interesting dilemma now because he's still going to be the defensive coordinator at Seaholm, but now he adds the title of boys basketball coach at Clarkson. I know Adam, Adam Seaholm. What's going to help him is he's got program strengths on his side. JV team was not bad. Um, under then coach Sean Smith, um, the freshman team went 17 and three. So you look at the record that he brings. You know, it's a new outlook for Seaholm for several reasons. Because you look at what Adams brings to the fold and very popular guy, very familiar guy in the building. So there's a lot of familiarity with the players in the in the in the um coaches. So that that could help the transition period. But as I said, when it comes to transition periods, it has to happen during the season. And when you look at where Seaholm's at right now as a program, last year's team really struggled. They really, really struggled. Um, and but the sub RC programs were successful. So there's that to look forward to. But the problem that I have. Is sometimes when it comes to to program strength, sometimes it doesn't always translate to the varsity level, and that could be a challenge here for Coach Adams because you got a couple of issues you got to address. One, there's the Groves problem. When you look at the record against your arch rival, you know. You've had some battles with Groves. You've had some battles with Coach Mark West. And you look at what Coach Mark West has done at Groves since coming back. He's done a magnificent job. I mean, led them to a white title. Um, I mean, two years ago, last year being very competitive in the red, uh, winning a district championship. Um, you had the majority of your team back. You have a big three. And, um, John Simpson, Josh Gibson, and Paul Hubbard. Um, see home. They're ba They're a very young team. So now I gotta wonder what type of structure is he going to bring to see home? What type of structure is see home gonna be an up and down team? Are they gonna be a? Are they gonna be kind of what Coach DeGeter built over there? Or you don't know what type of program he's going to build over there. You don't know it. Because, you know, it's going to take a transition period and it's going to have to happen during the season. It's going to have to happen during the season. Because if they struggle 
you know, and then also they could struggle this year. They could struggle because of the transition period. They could. And then you look at, and then you look at the division you're in. The division you're in is absolutely brutal. When you look at teams like Oak Park, Farmington, Lake Orion, Oxford, you know all those teams have in common? They have a lot coming back. They have almost everybody back. Oak Park was in the red last year. Had a rough year. They're loaded. For Coach Duran Shepard, they're loaded. Then you look at um then you look at um Farmington. Arguably turns one of the best players in the game of Greg Grace. He should be healthy. Heading into the year, he should be healthy. And then there's Oxford. They got the majority of their team back. They have a superstar player in Jake Champagne. Luke Stolfin as well. Well coached to Coach Joe Fetchorik. Or Coach Fed. And then there's Lake Orion. Um, Zach Parks is back. Ryan Washoe's back. Um, Gabe Scott's back. Nick Alvin's back. Um, Jacoby Lowers is back. For Coach Jose Andradas. And they got a lot of experience back. And then you look at Troy, Troy Athens. Troy, they return arguably one of the best players in the game in Mason Parker. They got Andrew Lake as well. Interior is a question mark for me. And yes, you got Jets of Jack Savaka. Um and they got the younger Kuiper coming up on that pipeline over there. Troy Athens, we don't know who their head coach is yet. Um, they do return Nathan Pickett. So, and then there's Harper Woods. Harper Woods, we don't know what type of team they got. We don't know. I mean, their JV team, I mean, their JV had to expand during the middle of the year because they got in a little incident with Farmington. So, When I look at Seaholm, it's going to be an interesting division how they're going to go into this. And they're going to have a young team. I mean, they're going to have a very young team. But they've got some competence. I mean, you look at a player like Everett Wirtz, it could be a really good rebounder. They got a couple kids who played junior varsity last year as juniors. That they could rely on. Um, so I think that's going to be. It'll be very interesting to see how Adams handles this. Because. I think with, with, with Adams. It's going to come down to is. Can those kids buy in early? Can those kids buy in? Can they buy in? And then what type of approach are you going to do, with, especially with the sub varsity? I think the first thing he needs to do, honestly, is have no juniors play on JV. Because, you know, to me, and I've always been a big proponent of this, and I've been a big opponent of this, is when you have players playing junior JV on your, in your junior year, that's never a good thing. That never is. And... One of their best players this year was on the junior varsity program. So he's going to have one year of varsity. You know, and how is that? How is that fair? So I, it wouldn't surprise me if he, if um, Coach Adams decides to put his JV program to have a lot of sophomores on that team. I mean... And then you have a freshman team. You know what I mean? And then junior, seniors, up varsity. Unless you're, unless you know what I mean? You have a very good stud freshman, a very good stud sophomore. Then you put them up on varsity. 
So I expect some changes there with Coach Adams when it comes to Seaholm, when it comes to, I would think with the juniors, juniors on JV, I think he, I think he gets rid of that. Um, and I think that um, he um, puts, um, you know, I think that um, he's going to have a, um, I think it'll be interesting to see how he does. Because you got, they got to deal with Groves. And Groves has been very good. Their program is very good. Then you have the division component. Especially when you look at the, the top four. When you look at the prior four. You look at Oak Park, Farmington, Lake Orion, Oxford. I put Troy in there. I think that's five. Harper Woods, I got questions with. Troy Athens, I got questions with. And then, and then, the district. And then the district. Last season, Seaholm was in a district with Troy Athens, Troy, Birmingham Brother Rice, and Bloomby Hills. Could the MHA decide to put them back with Groves? That's a possibility. I mean, Groves has won a district district title. And they had to go through Royal Oak, Berkeley, Oak Park, and Royal Oak. So, that's a possibility. They could do that. Especially with the changes that the MHA is doing. Um, obviously, you look at Pontiac going down to, um, from... Division one to division two, that's gonna that's gonna have a huge impact when it comes to the district. Um you know, so we don't know what where they're gonna send C home when it comes to postseason. We don't know. So that's gonna be something to really watch for. And then also with Coach Adams, you know, taking the reins of, you know, being a new boys basketball coach, he's also the, the um defensive coordinator. For C home under coach Jim D. Wall. And there's going to be a lot of question marks with C home when it comes to, when it comes to, um, you know, I mean, like it is not an easy gig being the defensive coordinator for, um, for the varsity football team. And then being the boys varsity basketball coach, it's not an easy, it is not easy to do. So, Coach Adams is going to have a lot of challenges. What's going to help him is he's got a lot of young talent. He's going to have a lot of young talent. And I didn't name I didn't name a lot of them. Seaholm lost a lot of experience last year. It was a pretty rough final week of the year for them. Last season. It was a pretty rough week. How is he going to handle his staff? That's the question. How is he going to handle his staff? That's the question. And that's the challenge. For Coach Amps. That's going to be the challenge. So, my thoughts on the hire. Um, I, I like the hire. Um, you know, obviously, Coach Adams is a, um, is different. You know, he's going to bring a different, different aspect of the game to the players. Um, he's got a football mind, obviously. Um, but he does have a basketball IQ as well. So, you know, it'll be a different direction, a different start. Um, it'll be something different for Seaholm, um, that I think a lot of Maple fans are going to be used to, used to seeing. Um, but I know he's going to keep that work ethic that Coach DeGeter put in there. Um, that battle, that scrappiness. Um, and I expect them to do that. So, it'll be interesting to see, especially the division they're in. They're going to be a very young team. Um, but I, I think at the end of the day here, um, if it's going to come down to is can the players and the coaches handle the transition period? And the challenge is for them is they're going to have to have that transition period it's going to have to happen during the season. So that's the challenge for Seaholm is can 
the Maples handle that transition period? And can they handle it during the year? That is the big, big question that I have for C. Home and Coach Adams going forward. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll keep an eye on the situation over at Troy Athens for their boys program. Also the girls program at Bloomfield Hills and also at Groves. Um, those are the only three um, schools I know that are looking for new coaches in the basketball world, world around the OA. So we'll keep an eye on, all, on all, um, all three of those. So we'll see how that one goes. All right, let's recap the fall weekend here. Let's recap the um, Super Saturday weekend here. A um, couple things here that, um, you know, that we've seen here. A couple state champions have been crowned. Um, obviously, the um, you know, tennis, Clarkson winning their first state title in tennis, um, scoring 28 points in Midland on Saturday afternoon. Um, they're singles. Was the difference there? Um, Kay Olympke, Charlotte Perchenko, and Sydney Gias won their respective brackets in the singles competition. Um, Troy was fourth with 18 points. Adams and Stony Creek tied for eighth with 12 points. Bloomby Hills was 13th with eight points. Rochester was 17th with five points. Troy Athens and West Bloomby both tied for 22nd with one point, and Royal Oak did not score. Um, in Division Two, um, Seaholm um, fell to um, to um, Grand Rapids Forest Hill Northern twenty nine to twenty three. Um, North Farmington, a growth was tied for seventh with eleven points. North Farmington was tenth with ten points, and Berkeley was tied for fifteenth with four points. So the OA did not double dip on the um, state championships in tennis. Um, Clarkson won their first um, state championship in tennis. Congratulations to them um, on their for, on their um, state championship in Division One. Um, in girls track and field, um, Oak Park's dominance continues. Um, they were first place in the um, Division One state state meet, scoring eighty eight points, repeating as Division One state champions. Did most of the damage in the mid distance behind the um behind um they got 18 points in the 400 from Nevaeh Burns and Deshauna Kellogg, um Kylie King won the 800, and then the Knights relays the four by one, four by two, and four by four also won, while Burns took six in the 200, and that was their scoring for Oak Park, um on the day. Rochester was 12th with 18 points. West Bloomby was tied for 9th with 19 points. Bloomby Hills was tied for 30 with 7 points. Farmington was tied for 33 with 6 points. Royal Oak was tied for 41st with 4 points. Groves was tied for 44th with 3 points. And South Anderson Tech and Lake Warren were tied for 48th with 2 points. Ferndale was, in, was at Hamilton High School in the Division two, competing in the Division two state meet. They finished tied for 49th with 4 points. So. And the boys' side of things, Oak Park, um, and the boys' boys' side of things, Troy Athens was 13th with 15 points. Troy was tied for 17th with 13 points. Oak Park was tied for 28th with 11 points. Adams was tied for 31st with 8 points. Royal Oak was tied for 36th with 5 points. West Bloomby and North Farms were tied for 41st with 4 points. Um, and Groves rounded out the OA in scoring, tied for 45th with 3 points. So. Congratulations, Oak Park. Um, dominant, impressive to say the word. And they got a lot of talent coming back next year. So it wouldn't surprise anyone next year that Oak Park is right back in the conversation for the Division I state crown in track and field. Their middle school program just won the girls' state cha- girls county title um, in um, – in um track and field um surviving Van Heusen of course the majority of their kids go to Adams um sixty three to sixty one was that score um in that in the girls side of that meet um Warner the school in Farmington uh it's a school in Farmington won the state title on the boys side of things and they were pretty impressive in their meet uh in the um boys side of the um Oakland County Middle School meet so you know so that was 
you know, that was the impressive mark there. You know what I mean? Really impressive. Um, you know what I mean? Like for track and field, Oak Park's girls, some um, dominant, um, really impressive there, to say the least. Um, let's go to let's go to soccer now. Soccer regionals, of course. Um, soccer districts here. Bloomby Hills won their district. Um, they. They had the knockoff. Um, West Blue, I mean, Blue Bay Hills really wasn't tested by West Blue or Water Vermont. Um, combined 16 nothing. Um, they had no issue there. Lake Orion, of course, um, basically had to survive their district. Um, winning it in Davison. Um, having over, I mean, they had, I know they had their prom as well on Friday as well. Um, but Lake Orion ended up overcoming, um, he knocked off Oxford. He knocked off Lapeer um, in the first round in the pre district. Then they then they came back from five two down to stun Oxford six five in overtime, and then had to overcome Davison two to one, um, scoring a late goal with five minutes to go, and then basically holding a defensive stand late to hold off Davison. So for Lake Orion, it was a revenge tour for them. Um, they. They got back at three of their toughest losses earlier in the year. They got it. They got back at Clarkson and Petoskey, winning three two. They knocked off Oxford in overtime six five, and then they knocked off Davison, who beat them earlier in the year, first game of the year. Um, they haven't lost since April twenty seventh in Rochester when they lost to Plymouth Salem. Plymouth Salem ended up winning a district championship, um, shocking Lavoni Stevenson. Um, who ended up winning the KLA championship in girls soccer? Um, so Plymouth Salem's not a bad team. We're gonna preview that matchup. They got Heartland coming up, so we'll see how that one goes. Troy looked really impressive. Um, knocked off Troy Athens in the um, district final, which I was really surprised with, four to one. Um, albeit you got to give the Colts a lot of credit. I mean, I didn't expect them to really just go in there and just shock um the Red Hawks like that. Scoring four early goals in the first um in the first feet in the first half really will say it really helps things a lot right there. Um and then there's Rochester Adams who um knocked off Rochester one 0 on penalty kicks. Um Rochester knocked off Stony Creek and they knocked off um Utica Eisenhower. Um, Adams got by Utica, um, in a really competitive game. Um, and then Rochester and Adams, they met in the, um, district final. Um, I, I feel so bad for Rochester here because last season they lost to Stony Creek in the district final. They were number one in the state. Now here on your home field, take on Ad your arch rival Adams, go to penalty kicks. And he lose two 0 in penalty kicks. I mean, how do you explain it? How do you explain it? You can't. You can't. There's a lot of question marks there for um, Rochester heading into this off season. Um, but they did have a big win against Stony Creek, knocked off Utica Eisenhower. So we'll see what happens. Peep of the girls soccer regionals here. Um, region two will be at Oxford. You got Bloopy Hills. Um, they're gonna take on Milford. Um, Bloopy Hills, as I mentioned, riding a ton of confidence. They're gonna be tested by Milford. Um, Milford had to survive one 0 against Wall Lake Northern District Final. Milford's not a bad team. They're not bad at all. So it'll be an interesting matchup between those two teams. It'll be really interesting how that one goes. Lake Orion and Heartland. This is going to be really interesting. Heartland, we know, has got a lot of experience. Um, Heartland's had Lake Orion's number this past weekend. They knocked them off in both girls and boys lacrosse. Um, girls was 16-7 in favor of Heartland. The biggest shock to me was the boys one with Heartland winning that one 17-2. I, I still... Trying to figure that one out. I know Clarkson had a really tough loss for my brother Rice. Um, so boys lacrosse is done. Girls lacrosse, Movie Hills is still in. 
they get Brighton in a really tough matchup. So we'll see how that one goes there. But back to um girls soccer. Um Heartland, they're solid. I mean, they had a tough district. Um outscored Lansing Hole, Okemos, and Brighton by a combined six nothing. So this is gonna be really interesting to see how this one goes. It'll be really interesting. Um it's a matchup with different styles. So we'll see how it goes. And then there's Region 4 at Stony Creek. You got Troy taking on St. Clair Shores Lakeview. The, the Huskies are undefeated. They're unbeaten for a reason. Um, I think they're 18-0-2 coming into this game with Troy. This is no doubt going to be their biggest test of the year. Troy is legit. They are very legit. I think the Huskies are going to get severely tested by Troy. I think Troy right now is, is I'm running on all cylinders right now. They're on all cylinders right now. They're stampeding right now. It's going to be a tall order for um, St. Clair Shores Lakeview in that game. Then there's Adams against New Baltimore Yankee Bay. The Tars have been tested. Knocked up McComb last Cruz North 3-1. And then knocked off McComb Dakota in the final. 1-0. Adams, we know, went through the, one of the toughest districts in the state of Michigan. So, it should be really interesting to see how this one goes in, in the regional. Regional projections. I think Lake Orion gets by Heartland. It'll be a tall, it'll be a hard-earned game, I think. I think they're going to find a way to win this one. And I think Blue Bay Hills gets by Milford. I think we see a Lake Orion Blue Bay Hills regional final. And then at Sony Creek, I think Adams and Troy both win their games. I think Adams and Troy both win their games. And they see each other in the regional final. We'll see how it goes. See how it goes. And now to baseball and softball. Um, when I look at baseball, when I look at baseball, some of the upsets, I didn't expect Lake Orion to get upset by Rochester Adams the way they did. I didn't expect to give 12 runs like they did. Clarkson and Ox, Clark, I mean, like, Oxford got the district final in baseball. Um, knocked off Clarkson, fell to Grand Blank. Grand Blank, very good team. Um, Harper Woods had had some issues with Growth Point University League. Um, um, Seahol Winger District kind of wasn't surprised. I had them favored. Um, Troy, Troy knocking off Groves on a um, on a um, on a walk. That was surprising for me. Um, so in baseball, there's two teams that remain: um, Rochester and Seahol. Seahome takes on UD Jesuit at Seahome. UD Jesuit had no issue with um in their district winning by a combined 23 to 1 over both A and T and um and Ferndale. Seahome winning their both their games by a combined 18 to 2. Seahome's an honorary member of the Catholic League. They're an honorary member. So it'll be really interesting to see how this matchup goes. But Seahome's got home field. If they win, they'll either get Brother Rice or Orchard Lake St. Mary's at Wayne State. So, we'll see how that one goes. But I think seal has got more than a chance here to win this game against UD Jesuit. I think got more than a chance. And there's Rochester taking on New Baltimore Anchor Bay at Stony Creek. Rochester coming off. Um, surviving Yuka Eisenhower in, um I think, 12 innings. Um... And then they knocked off um, Adam 6-1. to one. New Baltimore Anchor Bay was battle-tested. They earned a hard-fought 4-3 win against Romeo in the district final. I expect this game to be close. I really do. I expect this one to be really close. I think home field matters here, and I think Stone Rochester's closer to Stony Creek. I think being in the city helps them. I think Rochester wins this one. I think they'll meet Grand Blank. I think they'll meet Grand Blank. 
See how that one goes. Then see home I mentioned. I like see home in that one against UD Jesuit. So as I mentioned, we'll see. Then there's Sapa. Um we're gonna PB boys go off the state finals this weekend over there. So we'll recap that next week. Um Region 7 over at Waterford Mott. You got Troy Athens taking on Lakeland, North Front and Blueberry Hills. Troy Athens won their district. You know, Troy Athens won their district. They were competitive. I mean, 24-9 in both their districts. They outscored um Arch Rival Troy 12-6. And then um 12-3 over Avondale. That kind of says something right there. Troy Athens, they know they can hit. But Lakeland's going to be a different animal. Lakeland's going to give them problems. Lakeland's been battle tested. They knocked off Wall Lake Northern in the district in the um, district semis, and then ten seven over our tribal Milford. Lakeland's battle tested. North Farmington, I think, had the hardest pass here out of out of the teams here. They had to survive Grove seven to four, um, and then knocked off Seahome four three and eight innings in the district final. Um. They've been battle tested. They got a chance against Blueberry Hills. Blueberry Hills outscored um both Waterford Kettering and Clarkson fifteen by combined fifteen nothing in both games. I still can't believe they knocked off Clarkson. Two nothing. I still can't believe that. Very surprising. Really surprising to see how Clarkson struggled in the softball. Really, really shocked. My pick in the regional, I got Lakeland here winning this one. Experience matters. Um, I think it's going to be Lakeland and Bloomfield Hills. We know Bloomfield Hills can hit. They're well coached under Coach Dan, Dan Whitmer. Um, but I just think that um, Lakeland, with their experience, it's going to be too much for them. So we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. And then the Region 14 at Trenton. Um, Harper Woods takes on Carlton Airport. Dearborn Divine Child versus Riverview. Um, Harper Woods really wasn't testing their district, winning both their games by a combined 30 0. Um, beating both Detroit East English Village Prep and Detroit Denby Tech 15 0. They're going to play Carlton Airport. Carlton Airport's a good team. They beat a really good new Boston here on team in 12 innings, 4 3. And then 7 nothing against Trenton on their home field. That kind of tells you something right there, how good the Jets are. And I know Carlton Airport, the Jets, they played Harper Woods in football this year. And I know they're going to be motivated. I know it's softball, but I, I, don't, I know they remember that football game. Um, then there's Dearborn, Devon, Chow, and Riverview. I mean, the Falcons, they had no issue with Detroit Henry Ford. And um, and um, Detroit Martin Luther King in the district, they had no issue with both of them. But Riverview's scary. Riverview is absolutely scary. Outscored scored um, Southgate Anderson and Dearborn Heights in Annapolis by a combined, and um, Dearborn Heights Rochelle by a combined 45 to 2. That's scary. That is insane. When you outscore three opponents by a combined 45 to 2. That's nuts. Really nuts. In this regional, I'm going to take Riverview. I just, I just, they're a proven powerhouse. Riverview's solid. Really good team. I mean, I don't see Harper was getting by Carlton Airport. Um, I'd be shocked they do. If they do, I don't see him getting by Riverview. Riverview Devon Shaw could be a really interesting game. Could be. Could be. It could be. See how that one goes. And then Region 8 at Lake Orion. You've got Lake Orion taking on Utica Ford 2. Macomb, Dakota, New Baltimore, Anchor Bay. New Baltimore, Anchor Bay um, won their district by a combined 21-0. Um, Utica Ford won their district by a combined 25 to 6, knocking out McComb Last Cruz North. McComb Last Cruz and Frazier. 
Um, Macomb, Dakota, um, they have been, um, they've had some really good, um, they had, they won their district pretty much on a post. And then Lake Orion, I think, has been battle, the more battle tested of the groups in this, in this regional. They're coming off an, they're coming off an 11-0 win against, um, against Rochester in five innings. And then knocked off Aaron Flynn at Stony Creek 5-4 which was an insane game. Stony Creek has been ranked in state all year. Really good team. And the Dragons found a way to win that game. The possibility of a Lake Orion Macomb Dakota rematch looks really real right now. And it could happen. Pending if Macomb Dakota gets my new ball for Anchor Bay, which they should. And Lake Orion against Utica Ford. That's going to be a really interesting game. That'll be a really interesting game. I remember the regular season meeting. Um, and I know State Champs um, softball podcast over there. They talked about Macomb, Dakota. And I listened to it. Um, the accomplishments they've had this season. They've called Macomb, Dakota their dark horse this year. I tend to disagree with that. Um... It was a 7-5 win for Macomb, Dakota. I mean, I know Macomb, Dakota had a lot of motivation last year after Lake Orion beat them in the um, regional final when Macomb, Dakota was ranked number one in the state. Um, Lake Orion, of course, you know, they it was, that game was at Lake Orion. It was a 7-5 win for Macomb, Dakota. Um, Lake Orion, if they could take a page out of the um, girls' um, soccer playbook, you know what I mean, when it comes to revenge tours, has an opportunity here if they can get by New Ball at uh, Utica Ford too. Ford's a really good team. They're they're good. I mean, they're a very good team. I mean, they knocked off um they weren't really tested, as I mentioned, 25-6 in their last two games. Um so it could be really it'll be really interesting. It's gonna be really interesting to see how that game goes. It'll be really interesting. Now, if Lake Orion Macomb Dakota were to play in the regional final, that could be a Donnybrook. That could be a heck of a game between the Dragons and the Cougars. I remember the catch last year that Ellie Britt made in that game where she made a leaping catch going out, going into the foul, going into foul territory. She made a leaping catch. Ellie Britt's one of those top players that I think opponents have to pay real close attention for. I know what she's done in girls' basketball. And also a very good golfer. Three-sport athlete. But I expect that regional to be really tight. And I like Lake Orion in that regional for a reason. Home field matters. I respect the, the um, ladies' opinion there. But I just think Lake Orion's hitting. If Lake Orion, I mean, like, I think if Lake Orion will find a way pitching-wise. I mean, that game could be a really high-scoring game between Lake Orion and Macomb, Dakota. That could be a really, really high-scoring game. We'll see how that one goes. It's at Lake Orion. Whereas, you know, you look at, um, we have Region 7 at Water, Vermont. Region 14 at Trenton. And region at Lake Orion. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Before I, before I sign off, um, I'd like to send my um, thoughts and prayers to the Clarkson community. Um, thoughts and prayers with Coach Dan Fife and his family. Um, I'm going to miss you, Coach. I'm going to miss you, Coach Fife, really, really dearly. Um... Also, follow the blog at Sangal Bay 4050 at blogspot.com. We're also keeping an eye on the basketball ser- coaches, coaching searches at um, Troy Athens for boys and Bloomfield Hills and Groves for girls. So we'll see what happens going forward um, when it comes to those searches. Everybody, let's sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care and see you then. God bless. And I'll see you all soon. God bless. You.